Hi guys, all boys and girls, and welcome back to Robbie's English Harmony video blog. Currently, I'm having my Monday morning tea. Cheers. You see how big, how huge this mug is? This is the kind of mug I like, you know what I mean? This is what I call proper tea drinking. You can make, make yourself almost a liter of tea and drink it. Right? Anyhow, in today's video, I'm going to look at the following topic. Simple past versus present simple, right? And this is, as a matter of fact, thing that confuses the hell out of so many foreign English speakers, right? And uh, ironically enough, I haven't actually recorded a video about this particular topic in the past, which is kind of weird because I've been publishing my videos for years on end. At this stage, it's actually eight years since I'm running the English Army blog, or actually nine years. Yeah, going nine years this year, to be honest with you. I started it in 2007, if I'm not mistaken. So next year, going 10 years, you know what I mean? That's going to be a big anniversary. Anyhow, it's surprising that I haven't actually touched upon this particular topic, right? Comparing the simple past. I did it, for instance, uh, against the present simple. I've done it. And um, when you use one or the other, you know what I mean? And the reason I'm saying that it confuses the hell out of so many foreigners is because I've had first-hand experience dealing with people who, who are not really sure on how to use these two tenses, right? As a matter of fact, one of my fluency star students served as an inspiration for this video because um, that person was kind of not really sure on how it's done and then I explained it to her and she was... Um, very happy about my, my explanation because it's pretty straightforward if you boil it down to the very basics, right? So, first things first. I've done it, you know? I, For instance, I've been to London, which is not really true in my case because, believe it or not, I've never been to London, right? And it's very weird because I live in Ireland, which is very close to England. So, it's just one small hop with a plane, like half an hour flight or something, you know, and uh, you're in London, you know what I mean? And with these days prices where you can uh, go to London just paying literally 20 or 30 euros, you know what I mean? It's no excuse not to go there. But on the, on the downside, obviously, when you go there, you have to book a hotel and so on and so forth. And then you have to go sightseeing and all those costs add up. And eventually you end up spending... A fortune, you know what I mean? So I guess I've just kept putting it off and off and off. And uh, anyhow, I'm going to do it one fine day, I would imagine. But anyhow, lovely going back to the subject. I've been to London, right? And then you can also say, I went to London. Okay, so what is the difference, right? Uh, first things first, you don't have to be kind of analyzing your English language uh, Language? What did I just say? Language. See, I'm, I, I just made a mistake, but it just goes to show that making mistakes is a crucial part of the whole fluency improvement thing, right? Anyhow, I, you see, today I'm all over the place. I just keep veering off the subject and uh, touching upon random things. So, I've been to London, right? It's a general statement. You're not specifying a specific point in time and mark these guys. Point in time this is the crucial bit right whenever there's a time mentioned a specific time a year a day month week whatever that's when you use simple past i went to london last year i went to london 10 years ago i went to london last monday that's simple past you know you don't use the, the present tense, the simple present, I've been to London, when it's followed up with a specific time. And when I say specific time, don't, please, don't be thinking that I'm talking about a very specific, like, time of the day. Even a year is, is quite specific, right? So, you use perfect simple only when you don't refer to any time at all. Like, I mean, there's no time reference mention basically no years nothing you know i've been to london and you can obviously say i've been to london five times but this time reference you know five times is not the same as referring to a particular year or a month or a day 
you know? It's just saying how many times you've been to London. So, I think the best way, excuse me, I gotta take a sip of tea. So, I think that the best way of kind of wrapping your head around this concept is by... By, by, by kind of uh, getting used to the concept of using the perfect present in the beginning of a story, you know? When you don't use any time references. So basically you would say, you know what? I've been to London a good few times. Or, as a matter of fact, I've never been to London, you know what I mean? And then, after that point, you can start using the simple past, right? And here's how it happens. Uh, you know what? I've been to London 10 times at this stage, you know? I've been there 10 times. Last time I went there was last summer, and before that, I went there every, every year for 10 years in a row, you know? So you, you, you use the perfect simple. Yeah, per perfect, no, present, sorry, I'm getting all mixed up in these grammar terms, but it's just because I'm not using these grammar terms. I'm not all about these grammar terms. If I were a traditional English teacher, that would be all about the grammar terms, then I would imagine I wouldn't be getting mixed up in these uh, these terms, but I, I, I said it wrong. I said perfect, uh, simple or something. No, it's perfect present that I wanted to say, right? So you use perfect present. I've been to London. In the beginning of the story, when you're making a general statement, you're basically stating the fact that you've actually been to London, you know? And then you start using the simple past. I went there with my friends. So that's kind of a storytelling, you know what I mean? When one event follows another, you know? We went there and then we actually had booked the hotel beforehand. And now I use the past present. Tense. And you may want to click on this link where I'm explaining how that's to be used. Basically, when you're referring to a point in time which uh, had happened before the general storyline, right? And uh, and then we we went si sightseeing, and then we went to different restaurants and all the different museums, and we visited the Big Ben and uh, what's what's the palace called where the Queen lives? Um, Westminster Palace or whatever. I'm not really familiar with these terms, you know what I mean? But any, anyway, you get the drift, right? So you make the general statement in the beginning and then follow it up with simple past where you tell the story. Where you went, when you went there, who you went with, what you did there, and so on and so forth, right? So, to recap the whole thing, present perfect is used to make general statements about what you did or what you didn't do in the past, but it's very general. It's it's lacking any references whatsoever to years, days, months, weeks, whatever. You don't mention about it, right? But then when you start talking about specific times, that's when you uh, introduce the simple past, right? So I hope that this video is going to clarify this whole issue for you. And uh, just to let you know, there was a comment recently. Oh yeah, actually nine hours ago at this stage, posted where uh, one of my blog readers asks me where to use gone and went, right? And actually this one was the the reason I actually recorded the video right now because uh, I read the comment and then I realized, hold on a second, I haven't actually addressed this particular issue in a video. And then I remembered my Fluency Star student who, who had the same issue and I was like, okay, let's, let's make a video about it. So I hope that this video is gonna be useful for you, my friends, and obviously, if you have any further questions, please feel free to publish them in the comment section below. Thank you, and bye-bye.